This was not even a month ago, so all the small details are still fresh in my mind. I have been using dating apps on and off for years. I think Tinder sucks along with its customer service, and I was never a fan of Hinge or OkCupid. I mainly use Bumble. In my Bumble bio, I have my height, which is 4'11", I make a joke about being short, and then I have my Instagram and Snap at the bottom. Because of that, I get a decent amount of random follow requests on Instagram. Half the time I don't follow them back. I also get a lot of random people adding me on Snap, probably more on there than on Instagram. I usually only add them back if I recognize their name from a recent conversation on Bumble, or if their Bitmoji looks pretty normal. I know, that sounds weird. I deal with a lot of stupid, disgusting boys on Bumble, but it's not as bad as Tinder. Still, I'll often have the typical douche frat boy asking if I do hookups or sending any kind of provocative messages. Usually when that happens, I'll mess with them a little bit and then unmatch them. This one time, I guess three, almost four weeks ago, I matched this actually pretty attractive guy. He sent some pickup line that was kind of creative and got my attention. Pretty soon, he asked for my snap. Then seconds later, he added me after noticing I had my snap in my bio anyway. So I added him back because why not? He started messaging me on snap. I screenshotted the first two pics on his Bumble profile and sent it to my girlfriends, mentioning how attractive he is. My friend Gianna replied right away saying it's a catfish. She matched it too. So I decided I'd mess with them a little bit. The things he was messaging me on snap were slowly progressing to be more sexual. So I started saying the most unattractive things possible, and they started getting noticeably salty. I said I would be down to come over if they sent me a selfie. He didn't send a selfie, of course. He just replied with a message asking what my address is. I didn't reply at first, asking my girls what I should do next. But then I got a notification that the guy screenshotted my Snapchat profile. I immediately blocked him and remembered I had my location on the Snap map as public. The problem is, the houses in my area are spaced out enough where he could easily identify which house I was in. I panicked, asking my girlfriends what to do. They tried to calm me down, assuring me there was no chance he'd come to my house. They did a good job because they made me realize how ridiculous him coming to my house sounded. I was watching New Girl on Netflix. The doorbell suddenly rang. I paused the show, and I felt my heart jump into my throat. I was home alone, not expecting my parents or siblings, and it was past 10. I turned off my bedroom light and TV screen. I wanted total darkness to give the illusion no one was home. I suddenly got a notification that someone added me on Snap. The username was, it's me, add me back. I blocked the account immediately. Two minutes later, another account added me on Snap. This one the username was, I'm outside your house. I screenshotted that and sent it to my friends and family, now in tears. I blocked it as well. There was a long pause now. I hoped maybe he had given up. During that time, I was texting friends and family, but ignoring all their phone calls because I was so paranoid that I'd be heard from outside. Finally, I got another dreaded notification from Snap, saying someone added me. This time the username said, I'm looking right at you. I turned to the window, naturally. I wish I hadn't. I wish I'd just ran out of the room and called 911. But I looked and saw him looking into my room, this disgusting, smiling man. I'm sure my face turned completely ghostly white as I looked at him. I ran out of the entire house, screaming at the top of my lungs down the street. Two neighbors came outside in response, and I basically ran into one of their arms, crying for help. The neighbor called the police for me, but the man was not found in or around the house. I somehow had to gather the courage to go back into that house and stay there for the night. I locked myself in my parents' room since it's the only bedroom upstairs with a lock, and I prayed I'd be able to fall asleep. I lay awake for seemingly hours though, and eventually I knew for a fact I heard something outside the door, like tiny, soft footsteps causing ever so slight cracks in the wood. I sat up and stared at the bottom of the door, dreading the lights outside turning on or someone trying to open the door. I grabbed my cell phone and dialed 911. I immediately said to the operator in a quiet whisper that someone was inside my house and I was alone. But maybe I didn't say it quietly enough, because footsteps on the other side of the door confirmed that I was right. I wasn't just hearing things. The footsteps walked away from the door quickly, and I heard them go down the stairs, and eventually I heard the front storm door slam shut. The cops arrived shortly. The same cops had returned. This time they wouldn't allow me to sleep there the rest of the night. 
called my friend Gianna, who was still awake, and she said I could come sleep over for the rest of the weekend. The police escorted me there after I locked up my house. I'm grateful I didn't fall asleep that night, as I wouldn't have heard those tiny footsteps outside my room, and I might not have called the cops in time. I hardly use Snap. I find it to be an immature form of communication. I only have one so I can receive snaps from friends and occasionally send people snaps while I'm on vacation somewhere or doing something fun. I do not view Snapchat as a viable replacement for simply texting someone. That being said, when this girl Kate that I hadn't heard from in months, who I was kind of into, one night randomly snapped me, my face lit up a bit. She snapped me a picture in a dark room, presumably her bedroom, saying, what are you doing? I replied with an awkward selfie, saying watching friends, made more awkward with the obnoxiously bright flash from my phone. Another reason I hate Snapchat, because I look terrible in selfies. Expecting her to run away after my selfie, she actually snapped back. I could barely make out part of her face. It was 90% black wherever she was with a hint of red glow. She said in the snap to come to her place. I was done with the stupid selfies, so I just messaged her back asking where. She sent an address, it was 10 minutes away. I was bored, so why not? I got in my Chevy and started following towards the address. It wasn't that far. I was there quicker than expected, but I'm also a speedy driver. The address was of a house, at the edge of the same town I live in. Since I have her number, I just texted her, but with my car idling and her not answering right away, I decided to just call her. The call was answered, but she didn't say anything on the other end. In fact, all I heard was garbled background noise, likely because the phone was answered by accident. I said hello a few times, hoping maybe she'd hear me in her back pocket or wherever her phone might have been. I listened for a little while, and eventually I started hearing a man's voice in the background. I screamed hello two more times into the phone, and then I distinctly heard in a girl's scream, help me, before the call was hung up. I didn't know what to make of all of that. I texted her one more time, what's going on? Minutes later, I got a text back saying, come in, I just opened the front door. I looked at the house, and sure enough, the front door was left open now. At the same time, I got another snap from Kate. I opened it immediately. It was a picture of her legs in a dark room. She was wearing ripped jeans, and it looked like she was sitting on the floor. Something wasn't right here. I wasn't going in that house. I called 911 and reported a possible kidnapping situation. In the meantime, while waiting for the cops, I texted back the number, saying one second I'm on a phone call, then I'll come right in. But there was no answer. In fact, the next time I looked at the front door of the house, it was closed now. I was worried that what I was imagining was coming true. The cop car eventually pulled up behind my car, and I pointed them at the house. Another cop car pulled up quickly across the street, and two more cops got out. A total of four cops were knocking at the front door. A man opened the door, and they identified that they received a reported kidnapping in the house. One of the police officers actually let himself into the house past the man. The other two followed, while one stood with me by the front porch. Not even 30 seconds later, one of the cops yelled at the other two to get him in cuffs. And then a girl's cries for help soon became apparent from the basement. I was in absolute shock when the girl I recognized as Kate was being escorted out of the house in tears. She was a wreck. She looked like she had just experienced a life-changing trauma. I can't even imagine. This wasn't even her house, this was apparently the man's house. But the girl's aunt didn't live too far, so she was brought there. Obviously the man was brought to jail, and I'm sure he's now in prison. That Kate girl really didn't seem to want to talk to me too much beyond thanking me for saving her life a bunch of times. I'm not mad about it though, I understand. Experiencing whatever she went through in that basement is probably something no one wants to think about. Greetings, my name is Terry Carnation of the podcast Dark Air with Terry Carnation, reading a story for the aptly named Mr. Nightmare. I am an 18-year-old guy and a freshman in college. I go to school in my hometown so that for my first year I can live with my parents and save money on student housing. I go to Montana State University in Billings, the state's largest city. And no, we don't ride horses to school. We have cars. In school, I still knew and hung out with most of my high school friends that decided to stay in town for school as well. 
but in my calculus class, I didn't know anyone. I am pretty outgoing and can easily start a conversation with a stranger, but I strangely found it hard to make friends in that class. Eventually, I just gave up and went to class to learn rather than make friends. About two weeks into school, this guy I hadn't seen in class before started to sit near me. He would always come in around ten minutes late and would sit as close to me as possible. It weirded me out, so I would sit as far from the door as possible to see if he was actually trying to sit near me. I observed that he would enter class late and walk past at least ten open chairs just to sit beside, in front of, or behind me. He had this creepy vibe. His hair was always messed up and greasier than a McDonald's burger. His clothes were ripped up and looked ancient, and his hands were always black with dirt. I am a neat freak, and always keep myself and my things clean and organized. So, just looking at him repulsed me a little bit. He also looked way older than the rest of the class, almost like he was forty. He started to fall behind in class since he never took notes and he started asking me for help. Even though he looked creepy and gross, he seemed very nice and shy. I felt bad for him and would explain problems to him when he asked me to, but tried to keep it casual and not be overly nice. One day, he asked me for my Snapchat so that he could get help when we weren't in class, since Calc was only a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. After hesitation, I gave him my username. Strangely, he wrote it on his arm in huge letters with a king-sized sharpie. After class, I was getting in my car to go home and saw that he had already added me and Snapchatted me. I groaned and regretted giving him my username. I got in my car and drove the 20 minutes home. By the time I arrived, I had forgotten about it and went about my day. I should mention now, a girl's name added me on Snapchat on this day too, so I added her back even though I didn't know who it was. Later that night I got another Snapchat from him. I opened it. The first one from earlier that day was of his arm with my username on it. The caption had a ton of blushing faces on it, more than I could care to count. The second was a shirtless picture of him in a bathroom mirror but it looked like a gas station bathroom. It said, the jeans you wore today were so tight around you and I couldn't stop staring. I was immediately weirded out and considered blocking him. I thought better of it though and wanted to avoid an awkward situation in the next class we had together. I didn't reply to him and went about my night. I had a few friends over and left my phone sitting on the couch and one of my friends picked it up and said, Dude, who's this Jefferson guy? He sent you like 20 snaps. I grabbed my phone and scrolled through my notifications. I clicked on one, and it brought me to the chat section of Snapchat. The messages started off with him asking why I never replied, and got increasingly more angry and aggressive as they went down. Then a picture popped up, and I opened it. It was of my front door, and it read, Come out right now, in all caps, with about 100 exclamation points. I suddenly remembered I had my location on for snap maps, and he had tracked me to my house. I immediately screenshotted the picture and the messages. One of my friends recommended calling the police, but I wasn't worried since I didn't think he could get in. Flash forward two weeks and I hadn't seen the guy since. One night I was watching people's stories and came across Jefferson again. I was horrified because I thought I blocked him. I looked at the username and saw that it was the username that I thought was a girl adding me all that time ago. He had made a fake Snapchat knowing I would probably end up blocking him. His story was even creepier though. It was a picture of me walking with my friends in a parking lot earlier that day. I was pissed now. I messaged him and asked why he wouldn't just leave me alone and why he couldn't realize I didn't want to be his friend. He only replied with more pictures of me taken over the last couple of weeks. Me walking, me driving, me at the movies with my friends, me at a restaurant downtown with a girl I liked. 
I was so completely creeped out that I blocked him again. I wish I had saved the pictures. But after I press charges for stalking, I imagine the photos will be subpoenaed for evidence. I have since turned off my location for Snapchat, and I only add back people that I know. Thank you, Mr. Nightmare, for that nightmarish story. Thank you, Tristan, for that indelible nightmare of a story that you've shared with us. Ugh, blood-curdling. Now, if I only knew what Snapchat was, I, I, don't, I don't know what that is. Is that... Is it, a, is it a device? I'm not sure. Um, but I can only imagine. One can only imagine. And frankly, I'm most surprised by the fact that someone in Montana is studying calculus. <laughs> I didn't know they had universities in Montana, let alone courses like calculus. <laughs> I, bet, I bet they ride horses to class instead of cars. <laughs> oh, Tristan. Stay safe out there, buddy. Stay safe, Tristan, and only add people do you know to your your chapsnats. Only add friends and not creepy dudes. <laughs> Full confession. That was me. But I am, however, a little older than 40. So <laughs> it was me, Tristan. It was me. This is Terry Carnation. I host the podcast Dark Air with Terry Carnation. New episodes out every Thursday. Follow me on my misadventures as I host a paranormal radio call-in show featuring, well, me, Terry Carnation. Thank you, Mr. Nightmare. Thank you, Tristan. Thank you, listeners everywhere. Remain open to all possibilities. <laughs> I, I couldn't resist doing an evil laugh. I love doing evil laughs. Here's another one. <laughs> All right, that's enough. <clears throat>